Detroit basketball. Now that we got that out the way, this is going to be a big win tonight, man, against the Toronto Raptors. They win 99-95 on the road to move to 6-8 overall and 2-0 in NBA Cup play. The Pistons have two more group play games against the Indiana Pacers and the Milwaukee Bucks later this month and early next month. So the Pistons have a legit shot now. I know the NBA Cup is not is not the most important thing, right? <laughs> but for a young team that's trying to build some confidence and make a name for themselves across the league on a major platform, this is a good opportunity to make some noise. So the Pistons have two more games. The next game is against the Pacers. I think that's in two weeks. And the final game against the Bucks is in December. So they have a chance to be the team in Group B in their group to move into the knockout round. And from there, anything can happen. So, but getting back to this game, right? This game was a sloppy basketball game, man. This was, this was an ugly win. Ugly win from the Pistons tonight, but sometimes you got to win them ugly. Sometimes you got to win them however you can. The Toronto Raptors play very hard tonight. They play very tough. This NBA Cup, even though it doesn't mean everything, you can see that teams who may not be playoff bound or who may not have championship aspirations, they're using this as something to look forward to. They're using the NBA Cup as a motivational factor to make some noise and to gain some respect. And you can see that tonight the Raptors really wanted to try to get this win to put themselves in position to get to that NBA knockout round. Jakob Pertl, man, for the Raptors, man. He was out here looking like Paul Gasol, man. He had 25 and 19. Jakob Pertl, 25 and 19. He dominated the Pistons tonight. Um, Jalen Duran really struggled defensively with guarding him. It wasn't for lack of trying. He just has a lot of work to do defensively. His defense out of the pick and roll, his reaction time sometimes, his foot speed sometimes, his positioning sometimes. Just different things that he needs to work on fundamentally. He's trying, but you can see that Jakob Pertl is the more polished player right now. Um, and he's big. Jakob Pertl is seven, is legit seven feet, and he's pretty athletic for his size. So it was tough for JD tonight, but he did make some big plays late in the game that we needed to put us in position to win this game. So Jaden Ivey returned from a sprained toe tonight, and we needed him tonight. Tim Hardaway Jr. was still out with the head laceration, so Beasley got the start, and Beasley was very, very crucial and clutch and a big part of why the Pistons won this game. He went down for a second. I'm not sure what exactly he was that he injured but he was able to come back into the game and continue to make an impact. The Raptors were missing Scotty Barnes and Kelly Olenek tonight, so this was a very winnable game um, for the Pistons, and they were able to get that win, even though it wasn't pretty. So initial thoughts, right? Like I mentioned, man, this was a very rugged basketball game. Slow-paced, physical, half-court, grinded out. And the Pistons early in this game, they couldn't throw a rock in the ocean. Everybody not named Beasley and JD, they really struggled tonight. Just to run through a few, K 6 for 21, Jaden 4 for 13, Tobias 5 for 13, Ron Holland 3 for 11. It was just a very tough shooting night, especially from three point. The Pistons as a team shot 21% overall from three as a team. So they really struggled with that three ball. But the defense late in this game was really what helped them to, to finish off the Raptors. It seems like the Pistons just like playing close games. Once again, this game could have been put away late in the fourth quarter when they were up 10 points. And once again, they turned the ball over and they allowed the Raptors to get easy buckets down the stretch. In key moments, you can't turn the basketball over. We talk about it all the time. Possessions and momentum down the stretch mean everything, especially when you're on the road. If you're getting empty possessions and they're turnovers and they lead to easy buckets for the other team, you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're not taking care of the ball and you're giving the other team easy buckets and momentum. And when you're on the road, that's the last thing you want to do. That's the last thing you want to do. And they almost gave this game away. The, the Raptors came back to within two in the last minute. But Grady Dick missed a wide open three from the corner with them down two. And that could have put them up one and essentially maybe into the game. So the Pistons have to continue to work on not turning the ball over. Which is a young team. They're still learning how to play together. But you got to take care of the ball. Especially when you're in the road. Because you cannot give the other team life. You can't give them life. And one way to give them life is to turn the ball over and give them easy possessions. So thankfully and hopefully they can learn this lesson in a win and just continue to focus on taking care of the basketball down the stretch. Let's go to the box. Let's start with K. So as I mentioned, he did not shoot the ball well tonight. He shot six for 21, 28%. So he struggled with his shot tonight. But to his credit, he did facilitate very well tonight. He had a couple of turnovers here and there that would look careless. But especially in the first half, he was just making all the right reads. He was making the right reads. He wasn't turning the ball over. He was finding cutters. Like his vision was on full display, especially in that first half. So I got to give him credit for that. 10 assists for him. Only four turnovers. I can live with that. Absolutely. If he averages four turnovers on the season and he's giving you eight, nine, 10 assists a game, I'll take that two to one ratio every time. 
Absolutely. We can't win with that. It's not his ceiling, right? Because I would love to see him to get to that 3 to 1 to 4 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. But for now, I can live with the 2 to 1 if he's only giving you 4 turnovers. So, got to give him credit for making the right reads, making the right plays, finding the right guys. And down the stretch, he made some very key buckets when the Pistons needed him. When the, when the offense got stagnated and bogged down, it was a few times late in the shot clock where he was just able to get his own and get a bucket. And the Pistons needed it. So, K didn't play the greatest, but once again, when it mattered, he made the plays that he needed to make. And we have to give him credit for that. If you're going to give credit to a guy like LaMelo Ball, who made zero threes, who went over pretty much the whole game into the fourth quarter from three, and stepped up in the first quarter to get the win, then we got to do the same thing for our guy, right? And that's what happened. K didn't shoot well, right? He was getting others involved. He was pretty efficient with his decision making, right? And when it mattered most down the stretch, he made key plays for us to win the game. He did have a little bobble toward the end where he almost lost the ball. And I'm like, bro, just pick up the ball. <laughs> but aside from that, man, he didn't play his greatest game, but he played well enough for us to win, and he made big plays down the stretch. Jaden, his scoring and playmaking last game were missed down the stretch, especially when the offense became very Cade heavy, when he had the ball in his hands pretty much every play last game. We could have used Jaden's scoring and playmaking, and tonight the Pistons were glad to have it. He played a solid game. He had 14 points, 2 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 steal, 2 blocks, 2 turnovers. 4 for 13 shooting, so he didn't shoot it well either. 1 for 5 from 3. So. The team as a whole, outside of one or two guys, really didn't shoot the ball well tonight. But he did make some key plays. He made a big step back three in the second half with the shot clock winding down. Man, the Pistons needed that. He also made some very heady plays in transition, right? Reading the defense and making the right pass. He had one nice play where he broke the defense down and made a nice pass to Marcus Sassifor, which should have been a three, but his foot was on the line. J.I. made some big plays, and defensively, he continues to get after it, right? Grady Dick shot the ball terribly tonight. He was held to 4 of 17 shooting, and the big reason was because of Jaden Ivey. Jaden's a big guard, and he's athletic, he's fast, and he can get his hand up. He was really bothering Grady Dick tonight, so shout out to J.I. for playing a tough game. Right, it wasn't a great game, but it was a tough game. It was one of those grinded out performances that he gave us. Malik Beasley, man. I sound like a broken record, man, but Malik Beasley continues to impress. He continues to impress. I said it before, he may be the most important signing. He's definitely produced like he is. He had 20 points, three rebounds, one steal, no turnovers, eight for 15 from the field, four of nine from three, 45%. So he's gonna get up threes, man. And more times than not, if he's open, he's going to knock it down. So he's really giving the Pistons a boost offensively. And especially with him starting tonight, he knew he had to be aggressive. Because Tim Hardaway, who usually starts, is usually aggressive. So Beasley stepped right into that role and he played well. It looked like he may have hurt himself in the first quarter. Um, but he returned to the game. So I'm not sure what the injury was, but it didn't look to be too serious. He appeared to be okay. Tobias Harris played solid. He had 11 points, 11 rebounds. So he had a double-double. Three assists, two turnovers, 5 for 13 shooting, 1 of 4 from 3. So, I've said it before, I think his offense has taken a dip because he's more focused on the defensive side of the ball, right? 11 rebounds. Again, I've mentioned this before. There have been plenty of games this season where he's had double-digit rebounds, right? One game he had 14, led the team. So, he has focused and exerted more energy on the defensive side of the ball, and that's why a lot of his shots continue to come up short. A lot of shots he has right in the paint, about 10 feet out, and it just comes up short. Those are shots you expect him to make. But I think because he's exerting so much energy defensively that it's affecting him offensively. So if he gives the effort, I'm okay with that. I want to see at least 15 points from him. So 11 really isn't enough. But I do appreciate that he is crashing the boards and he's giving more effort defensively. Jalen Durham played solid offensively and struggled defensively. He had 12 points, 8 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 block, 1 turnover, 5 for 6 from the field. No free throws. So offensively, he was solid. Right? He only missed one shot. And they were all point blank at the rim, either offensive rebounds or getting set up by Cade or Jaden, right? And that's what you want to see offensively. Defensively, he really struggled to contain Yaka Pertle. Yaka Pertle was looking like a superstar tonight. They just could not contain him. Um, Isaiah Stewart had much better luck guarding him, but Jalen really had a hands full tonight with Pertle, man. But like I mentioned earlier, it's just a matter of the fundamentals. And he has to stay locked in and finish possessions. There were a few times where a, a couple plays where the Raptors had a point blank shot under the rim. And there'd be a Pistons player under the hoop. And they would assume it was going in, but it wouldn't go in. So the Raptors got another shot at it. So the Pistons have to work on finishing possessions. Just because it looks like a shot is point blank, don't assume it's going to go in. Right? Finish the possession. And I think Jalen Duren can work on that. And the Pistons as a whole need to work on that. I've seen that the last few games now where they're giving up on plays before the play's actually over. And that's allowing the opposing team to get another easy crack for offensive putback. So I want to see that improvement as well. Let's talk about Ron Holland for a second. I think tonight, once again, we saw what his role is probably going to be right now for this team, which is just kind of being a Swiss Army knife, 
right? Just being that guy who does the little things for this team. A lot like how Isaiah Stewart does it, but more so on the perimeter, right? When he comes in, giving the team a jolt of energy, he made a lot of plays tonight on both sides of the ball. Just not giving up on plays, right? When it looks like the ball may be secured, just giving that extra push to try to get a steal here, steal there. Attacking the basketball, getting on the floor for loose balls. Getting 75% of the 50-50 balls. Getting more of those loose balls than the other team, right? That's what Ron Holland is great at, right? Defensively, he's able to guard one through four. He plays great help side defense. He's a good cutter. He crashes the glass to get offensive rebounds. He does everything well right now except shoot the basketball. <laughs> he had 10 points overall on 3 for 11 shooting, 0 for 6 from 3. So he does so many things well for this team. Shooting is just not one of them right now. One thing that I've talked about with Ron Holland is that he doesn't lack for confidence. Even though a shot wasn't falling, he did not lack for confidence. He was letting nothing fly. <laughs> to a point now to where it's like, okay, Ron, all right, ease up just a little bit on that jumper. <laughs> but I love the confidence, right? But from him right now, what I want to see, I want to see him whenever he has the ball offensively, is look to drive the basketball. Look to drive the basketball because he's shown that he can handle the ball. And he's also shown that he can make the right pass. Right? His vision has been underrated by myself included, right? I didn't realize he had the vision that he actually has as a playmaker along with the handle. So I want to see him do the opposite of what I want to see Fontecchio doing, right? I've said for weeks now that Fontecchio, when he has to put the ball on the floor, I want to see him pass it. When Fontecchio catches and shoots, that's when he's best. I want to see Ron, when he catches it, put the ball on the floor and look to either get others involved or drive to the hoop. Because he's shown an, an ability already to be able to finish at the hoop and to make the right pass whenever the defense collapses on him. So outside of shooting, Ron played very, very well tonight, man. He made a lot of heady plays, a lot of plays to kill the Raptors momentum, man. He made big plays and big moments, big defensive plays and big moments, right? To really just kind of curb the momentum and just to get his guys going, right? And the guys are feeding off of him. You can see they're really feeding off of his defensive intensity, much like how they do with Isaiah Stewart. So that dog pound mentality between Isaiah Stewart and Ron Holland, and of course Jalen Duren, is continuing to form. I'm loving what I'm seeing from Ron Holland, man. He continues to show me more and more and more. And defensively already, he's making a huge impact. In long term, he's going to be a very, very good defender who makes a lot of intangible plays for this team. Isaiah Stewart, man, he's becoming a lot defensively. He set the tone once again, man, as soon as he came into the game tonight. There was one play where he got an end one on an offensive tap in, and he did that point to himself again. I think when he does that, he's basically saying that this is my space. Like this is my area, referring to the paint. He's really establishing himself as a force in that paint, right? A physical presence that's gonna fight you tooth and nail every night for that paint area. And I love that. Yaka Proto did not have it going easy the way he did when Stu was in the game, right? Stu's physicality, his ability to play straight up, his ability to move his feet made it much tougher on Yaka Proto. So I was glad to see that from Stu. And Stu continues to play well, man. A lot of offensive tap outs. He was blocking shots again tonight. He had nine points, seven rebounds, one assist, two blocks, one turnover in 23 minutes. Like I always say, he establishes that tone. Whenever he's in the game, you can just feel the defensive intensity as a team just pick up. Wendell Moore got some run tonight, man. He had eight points, six rebounds, two assists, one steal, and a block. A four or six shooting, 0 for one from three. So he plays solid, man. He's, he's really taking advantage of the minutes and opportunity that's been given to him. I don't know if he has a long-term role, especially with guys like Asar Thompson coming back soon, but he's filled in admirably, and he's played very, very well. He's hit some tough shots, and he's been very active defensively. So it's nice to see guys just staying ready and when their opportunity comes, take advantage of it. Speaking of which, Marcus Sasser also played solid in limited minutes. He has six points, five rebounds, two assists, one steal, one block, one turnover, three for eight shooting, 0 for three from three, which is rare for him. So he didn't shoot well from three, but Marcus Sasser has a calming effect. You can tell he's a very talented player. He's very good with the basketball. He's got a great handle. He looks like a very polished offensive basketball player, especially for a player who's not the biggest guy. Shots are tougher when you're shorter, I would know. So I appreciate watching him play because he plays very sound basketball. He's very fundamentally sound and offensively, he's a bucket, right? He didn't have to go on crazy tonight, but he made some big shots and big moments. He had two big shots. Both of them could have been threes. I think his foot was in the line for both, but, but he gave some quality minutes. Even defensively, he was coming over help side, stealing the ball from Yaka Proto, right? Making big, heady plays late in the game. So, and he actually got some crush time minutes in favor of Jay Nivey. I don't think it was anything wrong with Jay. I think Sasser just had it going and JB just kind of wanted to ride his momentum and just kind of see what happened. And he played well, man. He played well. So I was glad to see that from Sasser. He gave us some good minutes for sure. So overall, man, the Pistons made a sweat, um, but they were able to get the win. Just some things to work on, man. Turnovers late, right? Turnovers late. The Pistons have to work on continuing to take care of the basketball. But like I said, with Kate, 
four turnovers. So you can live with that overall when it comes to him. And we need the rest of the guys to continue late in the game to take care of the basketball. That's one thing. The other thing, free throws. 13 for 20 from the line. They made 13 and missed seven. So they couldn't really put a stranglehold on this game if they just knocked down their free throws. And especially late. Jaden missed one that could have put him up four. JD missed one that could have put him up four. So you got to hit your free throws late. So it wasn't a perfect game, right? Young team still learning how to build, still learning how to win. They got the win tonight. So I'm sure JB's going to have them working on these things. And hopefully as they move forward, a lot of these games that should be put away early won't be nil this late. So the Pistons moved to 6-8 and eight overall. Like I mentioned, 2-0 oh in cup play with two games remaining against the Pacers and the Bucks. Next up for the Pistons are the Washington Wizards on the road on Sunday. And I expect the Pistons to win that game. They're the better team. If they show up, play hard, keep their turnovers low, and play together with tough defense, they should get the win and move to within one game of 500. But we'll see what happens. But what did y'all see in tonight's game that I missed? Y'all know the drill? Let me know down in the comments and let's talk about it. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit first everybody. Peace. Hotter than MTV in Y2K. You don't want to see but that Y2K. Breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time. He's got a plan, yeah. Let off by none other than his brother Cannon. If yeah, this is more than a game, it's a passion. Why they sleep, we work it. Cause I'm a passion. Jay, then I'll be on the way. Get that foot to ride. Electrifying through the air. A Detroit shot. And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him. That boy is poison. It's in the scene.